What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Anthem video. And today I bring you all of the day one updates via a patch coming to the game probably Thursday or probably when you've got actually got the game when you download it on Friday. But before we go any further guys, I am giving away a full copy of Anthem. To be with a chance of winning it, simply make sure you are sub to this channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details are in the video description. If you guys have already pre-ordered but would still like to show your support, you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and Anthem videos are what you want to see, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so I have played a lot of my 10 hour free trial of the game through EA Access. So far, I am loving it. Yes, fixes are needed. But the game feels good. I am seeing though the game get a lot of hate. I am seeing reviews of the game already. Already giving those negative vibes. I am also seeing a lot of ignorance towards the game because of EA. I just want to tell you something. The game feels great to me. If you are a fan of games like Destiny, Warframe, Division and a few other loot shooters. This game I truly feel you will like. But I can't and won't force you to purchase it. That is completely up to you. If you want to go off the reviews of the game before it's released and it's got that day one patch, that's fine with me, it's up to you. If you have genuinely played it and don't enjoy it because of its playstyle and so forth, then that's fair enough, I don't understand. I personally do not like Warframe or The Division, but I wouldn't tell you guys not to purchase it even if I made a review of the game, stating that it wasn't to my taste. I'd always say give it a try for yourself and don't go off what others have said. That is a rule I have always lived by. Yes, some of these reviewers are right. But a lot of the time, they are wrong in my opinion. So anyway, I've been holding off on making such progress into the game and posting video guides and so forth. Due to it not being properly released yet for the majority. On Friday though, I expect to see a few videos from yours truly. I want to be on a level playing field to those of you who haven't played it yet. I'm seeing people already at max level. I'm like, that's just crazy. Please people, go outside a little. But yeah, this Friday when it actually drops for the majority, I will be diving deep into it. And that means I'll be covering Apex Legends and from and Destiny on my channel. Wish me luck, people. Okay, so we're going to look at the day one patch notes. Now, there's some interesting things here, some massive changes here, and things I'm pretty sure you will appreciate. So let's dive deep into it. High level fixes, improved loading times. Well, this definitely need fixing. Fix many infinite loading screens. Fix the multiple challenges, not tracking properly. A number of issues have been fixed that were causing players to disconnect or crash. Weapons and gear now have air numbers present for modifiers. General fixes and improvements. Loot reveal and expedition summary now correctly play during the end of expedition screens. The gather party mechanic has been made more lenient in a number of situations. At the end of expedition screen players will no longer get stuck on recording victories or skipping all. Game no longer hangs in javelin menu when unlocking the second, third or fourth javelin. During the mission, what freelancers do, dying after killing junk more and freeing arcanists leaves you unable to progress. This has been fixed. Challenges now unlock for players at the correct levels. Fix some camera issues during cutscenes. Legendary contracts can now be accepted from the social hub contract board. Some enemies have had their shield values decreased. Loot now properly drops for players who are downed. The texture quality of the NPC Prospero has been improved. Final boss of strongholds now drop loot instead of only being shown on the end of expedition screen. Fix the timeouts on echoes of relics to prevent griefing and to handle disconnections properly. Players can no longer fall through the floor during the third trial in the Fortress of Dawn. Completing the tutorial expedition will now show the correct ranger appearance. After disconnecting, rejoining an expedition will now place you back into a squad if you were in one previously. Corrected an issue where players could not interact with each other in the launch bay in certain circumstances. Corrected an issue during a mission bad deal where outlaws won't spawn, blocking progress. The start of the expedition screen has been improved. Addressed a variety of situations where killing enemies does not properly progress world events. Opening their chest now increases Tomb of the Legionnaire progress for all squad members present. Scar snipers can no longer shoot through Storm Shield. Corrected an issue where players will get stuck on the end of expedition screen in some situations. Players will no longer get disconnected if joining their Finding Old Friends mission while the cinematic is playing. Address a number of situations where players can get stuck on the environment in the launch bay. Increase the damage of the electric status effect. 
corrected an issue where the Shield of Dawn could be crafted with less materials than intended in some situations. The Platinum Mission feat now grants completion as intended. Status effects can more reliably be applied to Titans. Stronghold Speed Fixed an issue that will cause a Stronghold server crash after defeating the last boss. Temple of Scar players can no longer get stuck in the mine tunnel in the explosives room. Temple of Scar players can no longer be blocked from entering the explosives room due to fog wall. Fixed tyrant mines so people that join the stronghold in progress do not end up locked away from their team. Adjusted lighting in tyrant mine on the water section to make it easier to navigate to the exit. The swarm tyrant will no longer get stuck in the side cave entrances in some situations. Corrected an issue where players would spawn into different areas of the tyrant mine in certain situations. Gear and weapons. After having first pilot unlocked suit after tutorials, creating a new pilot and going to the forge no longer causes load screen hang. Ice damage bonuses are correctly applied on ice gear. Suit wide bonuses from inscription are now functioning properly. Players can no longer salvage equipped items. Javelin specific gear and or weapons are no longer able to be used on javelins they aren't intended for. Corrected an issue where in some circumstances masterwork components do not have any inscriptions. The Endless Siege Masterwork Auto Cannon no longer displays a damage increase of 0% in the tooltip. Ok and on to Javelins. The Colossus Javelin is now able to activate its shield more quickly after using an ability of firing a weapon. The Storm Javelin now reacts to gain hit when its shields are off. Fixed an exploit that allowed the Storm's ultimate attack to be used more times than intended. The Colossus Javelin can now shield and revive at the same time. That's actually a great addition. Interceptor combo aura has been increased in power and now has a damage over time component. Onto crafting, non masterwork materials purchased from the crafting store now show as their proper rarity instead of incorrectly shown as masterwork. Moving on to controls, additional mouse and keyboard control improvements have been made. Moving on to UI, some conversations were not popping up their reputation points post conversation completion. This has been fixed. The squad screen now displays the correct information for each player. Fix a number of issues where subtitles will no longer get stuck on the screen after dialogue is finished as often. Settings should no longer be set up on X and then restarting the game on Xbox One. Motion blur can now correctly be turned off. The electric stress effect now shows scale damage properly. An option has been added to hide the squad member hood. The edge of the compass will now pause to indicate enemy locations. A notification has been added in Fort Tarsis if a player's vault is at a cap of 250 items. On the repair destroyer step of a cry for help, the search radar has been adjusted to correctly lead the player to all four tools. Primer and detonator icons have been added to all interceptor gear and corrected a user face issue where a player's ultimate would show as available when it isn't. And guys, that is it for the day one updates they have dropped so far. Actually a massive list and some great great changes that is for sure people. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video updating you guys on this day one patch for Anthem on Friday. So many many changes that are coming to the game and all seem to be great in my opinion. But yeah guys, on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you are new around here and have videos or what you want to see, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.